In the late 1950s, the hunt began for the perfect cast to bring Operation Petticoat to life. The film required actors who could convincingly portray a crew navigating the challenges of war while dealing with an all-female group hidden aboard their submarine. For the lead role of Lieutenant Commander Matt T. Sherman, the production team pursued Cary Grant. However, after much negotiation, he declined due to his high salary demands. This led them to consider Tony Curtis, known for comedy roles in films like Some Like It Hot. His charm and comedic timing made him ideal for lighter scenes, but questions lingered about his ability to handle dramatic sequences. Regardless, they took a chance on him, and it paid off handsomely. The part of Chief Torpedoman's mate Luther Blair went to Marlon Brando initially. Yet, just two weeks before shooting started, creative differences emerged, leading to Brando walking away from the project. Desperation set in until someone suggested offering the role to Walter Matthau, then mostly unknown outside New York City theater circles. After several screen tests, he won over both the director and producers, bringing depth and humor to what became a memorable character. As for the female leads, Universal Pictures wanted big names to attract audiences. They approached Hollywood legends Esther Williams and Betty Grable, yet neither were interested. Then they turned towards up and coming actresses Dina Merrill and Joan O'Brien. Both had proven talents worthy of attention, ensuring that the female ensemble would hold its own alongside the male counterparts. Casting secondary roles involved finding actors who could add authenticity to the wartime setting. Gavin McLeod, later famous for The Love Boat, secured one such part, playing a young sailor eager to prove himself. Dick Sargent, another future TV star, appeared briefly as a naval officer early in his career. Chemistry readings proved crucial during casting sessions. For instance, when paired together, Curtis and Merrill displayed sparkling banter, hinting at romantic undertones essential to their storyline. Similarly, Matha's rapport with costurers Arlene Francis and Jean Evans solidified their places within the tight-knit sub-crew. Thus, through careful deliberation, fortuitous discoveries, and successful pairings, the cast of Operation Petticoat fell into place, creating a timeless piece of cinema enjoyed by generations since its release. The director of Operation Petticoat, Blake Edwards, brought a unique vision to this classic. Known for his comedic touch, Edwards approached the story with a blend of humor and heart. He drew inspiration from his own military experience, which lent authenticity to the film's naval setting. Edwards' directorial style was characterized by a fast pace and snappy dialogue. He believed in keeping the audience engaged with a constant stream of wit and visual gags. This approach is evident in Operation Petticoat, where the comedic timing is impeccable and the story moves along briskly. Collaboration was key to Edward's process. He worked closely with the cast and crew, fostering a positive and creative environment. For instance, he encouraged improvisation, allowing actors to add their own touches to the script. This collaborative spirit is reflected in the film's ensemble cast, which includes Cary Grant and Tony Curtis, who bring their unique comedic styles to their roles. The film's visual style is also noteworthy. Edwards used color and lighting to great effect, creating a vibrant and engaging atmosphere. The underwater scenes, in particular, are beautifully shot with a rich color palette that adds to the film's charm. In conclusion, Blake Edwards' directorial vision was instrumental in bringing Operation Petticoat to life. His comedic approach, collaborative style, and visual flair all contributed to the film's enduring appeal. Released in 1959, Operation Petticoat is a classic comedy film directed by Blake Edwards. This movie takes us on a roller coaster ride filled with laughter, drama, and even some emotional moments. You might find it hard to believe, but amidst all the humor, there are many surprising, amusing, and touching behind the scenes stories waiting to unfold. As the story unfolds, you may wonder when was the first time I saw this entertaining masterpiece. Well, just like every great adventure has its own unique beginning, my initial encounter with this timeless piece of cinema left an indelible impression upon me. And surely enough, countless viewers around the globe share similar fond memories attached to their maiden viewing of this beloved film. Now, before diving deeper into the fascinating lore surrounding Operation Petticoat, let's take a moment to reflect on your experiences. What is your most treasured recollection tied to this iconic movie? Was it the hilarious antics of Cary Grant and Tony Curtis that had you rolling on the floor laughing? Or perhaps the groundbreaking underwater scenes captured your imagination? No matter what resonated with you, we would absolutely adore hearing about your special connection to this cinematic gem. So don't hesitate, 
Feel free to share your stories and reminisce with fellow fans in the comments section below. Getting back to our captivating journey through Hollywood history, did you know that several unexpected challenges threatened to derail the production process during filming? From unpredictable weather conditions to technical difficulties, the cast and crew faced numerous obstacles along the way. Yet despite these setbacks, they managed to create something truly magical, a testament to both human ingenuity and perseverance. So buckle up, dear audience members, because more riveting tales await as we continue exploring the untold secrets hidden beneath the surface of this ageless comedy. As each new revelation comes to light, prepare yourself for a delightful mix of astonishment, amusement, and heartfelt emotion. After all, sometimes truth can indeed prove stranger than fiction. In the late 1950s, the Hollywood studio system was abuzz with the production of Operation Petticoat. This classic comedy, set against the backdrop of World War II, presented unique challenges for the cast and crew. The story revolved around a U.S. submarine, so creating an authentic setting was crucial. The art department meticulously designed sets that captured the cramped quarters and mechanical details of a submerged vessel. They even constructed a massive water tank on the Warner Brothers lot to facilitate underwater scenes. However, finding suitable locations proved challenging. Scenes requiring ocean vistas were filmed off Catalina Island, southwest of Los Angeles. Here, they encountered unpredictable weather and rough seas, which tested both equipment and patience. To mitigate these issues, they used innovative stabilizing devices on their cameras and boats. Another challenge came from blending live action with special effects. For instance, when painting the submarine pink became necessary, practical effects like dyes and painted backgrounds combined seamlessly with visual trickery to create the desired effect. One notable technique involves shooting day for night sequences, making exterior shots appear nighttime while actually filming during the day. By adjusting exposure levels and filters, cinematographers achieved convincing results without disrupting schedules or dealing with genuine night conditions. Despite logistical hurdles, Operation Petticoat sailed smoothly towards completion thanks to creative problem-solving and technological advancements. Its success would go on to influence future war comedies and solidify its place in cinema history. As one delves into the rich history of cinema, certain films stand out for their unique storylines and memorable characters. One such film is the 1959 comedy Operation Petticoat. Set during World War II, the movie follows the crew of the USS Sea Tiger, a submarine that gets painted pink due to a shortage of proper paint. This unusual situation leads to a series of comedic events involving a group of nurses who board the sub to escape enemy territory. The film boasts an impressive cast, including Cary Grant and Tony Curtis, both of whom deliver strong performances. Grant plays the part of the submarine captain, Lieutenant Sinium Dr. Matt Sherman, while Curtis portrays his second-in-command, Lieutenant Nick Holden. Both actors bring charm and wit to their roles, making them a delight to watch on screen. Operation Petticoat also features a talented supporting cast, including Joan O'Brien, Dina Merrill, and Gene Evans. These actors play off each other seamlessly, creating a lively atmosphere filled with humor and camaraderie. Behind the scenes, the film was directed by Blake Edwards, known for his work on classics like Breakfast at Tiffany's and Pink Panther. Under his guidance, Operation Petticoat became a critical success, earning praise for its sharp writing and entertaining performances. While some elements of the film may feel dated to modern audiences, Operation Petticoat remains a beloved classic. Thanks to its timeless humor and engaging storyline, its exploration of themes like teamwork and adaptability continues to resonate today, offering viewers a glimpse into the past while providing plenty of laughs along the way. In the creation of Operation Petticoat score, composer David Rose masterfully complemented the narrative and emotional tone of this classic. Known for his work in television and film, Rose tailored the music to enhance the comedic and military elements of the story. The soundtrack features a variety of musical styles, from light-hearted and playful tunes to more dramatic and suspenseful compositions. The main title theme, Operation Petticoat, sets the stage for the film's unique blend of humor and military life. Hans J. Salter, another composer who contributed to the film's score, brought his experience in crafting music for various genres. His work on Operation Petticoat further enriched the film's diverse musical landscape. Collaborating with these composers, the musicians breathed life into the score, ensuring each note resonated with the intended emotion. 
the musicians' skillful performances played a crucial role in elevating the film's overall impact. Through their combined efforts, the music and Operation Petticoat became an integral part of the storytelling, enhancing the audience's experience and leaving a lasting impression. The score's ability to complement the film's tone, whether serious or comedic, has made it a memorable aspect of this classic. In the film Operation Petticoat, a scene shows a truck sinking, which was also used in a later movie and television series. The USS Archer Fish and USS Wren, both used in the film, have notable histories, with the former present at the end of World War II, and the latter featured in the sinking scene. Additionally, actress Dina Merrill, who starred in Operation Petticoat, has a famous cousin, Barbara Hutton. Hutton was married to Cary Grant, who later co-starred with Merrill in the same film. This classic movie not only features memorable scenes and historical connections but also interesting ties between its actors and their families. One of the most iconic scenes in Operation Petticoat occurs early in the film when the submarine USS Sea Tiger is hit during a Japanese air raid. This scene is notable for its impressive special effects and realistic depiction of warfare. According to the film's director, Blake Edwards, the use of miniatures and practical effects helped create a convincing battle sequence. He states, we wanted to make sure it looked real, so we used actual explosives and fire to create the damage to the sub. Another memorable scene takes place later in the film, when the all-female nurses, led by Lieutenant Dorothy Schaefer, must abandon ship after the Sea Tiger runs aground on a coral reef. As they jump into the water, their brightly colored dresses billow around them, creating a striking image against the backdrop of the dark blue sea. Cinematographer Russell Harlan chose to shoot the scene using wide-angle lenses to capture the scope of the action, while also focusing on the individual reactions of the actresses. Harlan explains, I wanted to convey both the humor and the danger of the situation, and I think using the wide-angle lens really helped achieve that effect. The performances in this scene are also worth noting, particularly those of O'Brien and Tony Curtis, who plays Lieutenant Nicholas Holden. Their banter and flirtation add a light-hearted tone to what could otherwise be a tense moment, and their chemistry helps sell the unlikely romance that develops between their two characters over the course of the film. O'Brien herself speaks highly of working with Curtis, stating, He was just so charming and funny, it made my job easy. We had great chemistry right from the start. This scene, along with others throughout Operation Petticoat, has had a lasting impact on audiences, thanks in large part to the skillful direction, compelling performances, and innovative cinematography. Together, these elements help elevate the film above other comedies of its era, making it a true classic that continues to resonate with viewers today. In the film Operation Petticoat, Tina Louise declined the role of Nurse Crandall due to her dislike for the character's constant exposure to crude humor. The role was then given to Joan O'Brien. The film also features a notable connection between its cast members as Gavin McLeod and Marion Ross, who met on the stage play of Operation Petticoat, later worked together on the love boat with Ross playing McLeod's wife. Additionally, the film contains a clever reference when Commander Sherman mentions making a pact with Old Nick to restore Lieutenant Nick Holden to duty, using the nickname for the devil in Christian tradition. Released in 1959, Operation Petticoat quickly became a beloved comedy, known for its humor and unique storyline. The film follows the crew of a submarine during World War II, as they try to carry out their missions while also dealing with a group of stranded nurses. This unconventional plot struck a chord with audiences, providing a fresh take on war films which were typically serious and somber. The success of Operation Petticoat can be attributed to its talented cast, including Cary Grant and Tony Curtis, who brought charm and wit to their roles. Their chemistry was undeniable, making the film even more enjoyable for viewers. Moreover, the film's release coincided with the growing popularity of television, leading studios to produce lighter fare like Operation Petticoat to entice people back into theaters. This classic has had a lasting influence on popular culture. Its innovative blend of comedy and war drama paved the way for future productions that adopted similar styles. Furthermore, it introduced memorable lines and situations that have been referenced and parodied in various media over the years. On a deeper level, Operation Petticoat contributed to discussions surrounding gender norms and relationships during wartime. By featuring women in non-traditional roles as active participants aboard a military vessel, the film subtly challenged societal expectations of the time. 
However, it must be noted that these depictions remain limited by contemporary standards. In essence, Operation Petticoat, through its entertaining narrative and groundbreaking elements, left an indelible mark on both cinema and society. Decades later, it continues to amuse viewers while reminding us of changing attitudes towards gender roles and relations in times of conflict. The classic movie Operation Petticoat, released in 1959, brought an unexpected collaboration between Mee Curtis and Cary Grant. Curtis, inspired by his admiration for Cary Grant, joined the film following World War II, joining the submarine force after watching Grant in Destination Tokyo. Grant, intrigued by Curtis's screen appeal, was excited to work alongside him. Filming took place predominantly in Key West, coincidentally the home port of the USS Peregrine, a real-life fleet minesweeper, AM-373, which temporarily had its designation changed to AG-176 for the movie's purpose. The ship's number, partially visible, is a testament to the film's connection to naval history. The camaraderie between these actors extended beyond the screen, as Curtis remained close friends with Grant, one of the few outsiders the legendary star allowed in his life. Operation Petticoat, the 1959 comedy film directed by Blake Edwards, received mixed reviews from critics, but was generally well received by audiences. The movie's unique blend of humor, romance, and war drama was praised for its entertainment value. Critics commended the film's cast, with particular note given to the chemistry between Cary Grant and Tony Curtis. The New York Times' Bosley Crowther described their performances as sparkling and buoyant, adding that the film's light, frothy, and engaging tone made it a delightful watch. However, not all reviews were positive. Some critics felt that the film's plot was too thin, and its humor too broad. Time Magazine's review described it as a witless comedy about a submarine full of stranded women. Despite the mixed critical reception, Operation Petticoat was a box office success, and has since become a classic. It received two Academy Award nominations, including for Best Art Direction Set Decoration in a Black and White Film, and Best Sound. These nominations recognize the film's technical achievements, and its ability to create a believable and immersive world. The film's nominations and enduring popularity are a testament to the talent and hard work of everyone involved in its production. The accolades received by Operation Petticoat not only validated the efforts of the cast and crew, but also solidified their places in Hollywood history. The film's success helped to launch the careers of many of its stars and cemented Blake Edwards' reputation as a skilled and innovative director. In Operation Petticoat, the map on Captain Henderson's wall reflects a Germany divided in the late 1950s. The film stars, Cary Grant and Dick Sargent, reunited in that touch of Mink two years later. Regarding Cary Grant, he sold the rights to several of his films, including Operation Petticoat, in 1971. This decision followed a custody battle over his daughter, Jennifer. Grant, seeking to secure Jennifer's future, sold the rights to Universal for over two million. Among the films sold were Operation Petticoat, the Grass is Greener, That Touch of Mink, and Charade. Additionally, he sold the rights to Penny Serenade, the only film from his earlier career still in his possession. Post-sale, Grant disconnected from the movie business. He invested in property developments in Spain and Ireland. Grant's focus shifted to his daughter, with plans to spend evenings waiting for her after school and weekends teaching her to ride horses. This shift marked the end of his involvement in the film industry. In the making of Operation Petticoat, the cast and crew faced many challenges, leading to memorable anecdotes. For instance, the film's leading lady, Tony Curtis, was known for his playful pranks. One day, he replaced all the script pages with blank ones, causing quite a stir on set. This left the director, Blake Edwards, scrambling to recall the day's scenes. The film star, Cary Grant, was not immune to Curtis's antics either. During a scene where Grant had to slap Curtis, Curtis would intentionally flinch at the last second, causing Grant to miss him. This happened several times, much to the amusement of the rest of the crew. The film's setting, a pink submarine, was also a source of amusement and frustration. The color was chosen to reflect the worn-out condition of the submarine, but it proved challenging to maintain. The set was frequently repainted to keep the pink hue consistent, causing delays and adding to the film's budget. Despite these challenges, the cast and crew formed a close bond. They would often gather for impromptu jam sessions, with Curtis on the harmonica and Grant on the piano. These sessions helped to create a light-hearted and enjoyable atmosphere on set. In one scene, the crew had to flood the submarine's interior to create the illusion of a sinking ship. However, 
they accidentally flooded the set so much that the cameras were in danger of being submerged. This led to a mad scramble to save the equipment and redo the scene. The film script also underwent numerous revisions. The original script was much darker, focusing on the harsh realities of war. However, the studio wanted a lighter, more comedic tone. This led to a constant back and forth between the studio and the film's writers, causing delays and rewrites. Despite these challenges, Operation Petticoat became a beloved classic. Its blend of comedy and drama, along with its unique setting and memorable characters, has made it a favorite among audiences for decades. The 1959 movie Operation Petticoat received substantial assistance from the U.S. Navy and the Department of Defense. They provided ships, submarines, and access to naval bases for filming. The film's storyline, where the submarine constantly seeks a repair ship, has a real-life parallel. Actor Tony Curtis, who served on the USS Proteus during WW2, was inspired to enlist by the film destination Tokyo. Some plot points in Operation Petticoat are based on actual events. The opening WW2 scenes are inspired by the sinking of the USS Celian at Cabot Navy Yard, the Philippines. A letter in the movie, complaining about the lack of toilet paper, is based on an actual letter written by Lieutenant CM Dr. James Wigan Co. The need to paint a submarine pink in the movie is also based on a real shortage of red or white lead undercoat paint. Released in 1959, Operation Petticoat quickly became a beloved comedy, leaving a lasting impact on film history. The movie's innovative blend of humor and military drama proved to be a successful formula, inspiring future filmmakers to explore similar territory. Its innovative use of color in a time when most war films were shot in black and white also set it apart. The film's director, Blake Edwards, would later become known for his work on the Pink Panther series, but Operation Petticoat marked one of his earliest successes. The movie's unique approach to storytelling can be seen as a precursor to the comedic style that would become synonymous with Edwards' name. Operation Petticoat also launched the film career of Tony Curtis, who starred alongside Cary Grant. The chemistry between the two actors was electric, and their performances are still celebrated today. The film's success helped to establish Curtis as a leading man in Hollywood, paving the way for his future roles. The movie's influence extended beyond its initial release, inspiring a 1977 television series of the same name. While the show only lasted for one season, it further solidified Operation Petticoat's place in popular culture. In addition to its impact on film and television, Operation Petticoat has also been celebrated for its feminist themes. The film features a group of nurses who find themselves stranded on a submarine, forced to navigate the male-dominated world of the military. Their strength and resilience in the face of adversity are still inspiring to audiences today. In conclusion, Operation Petticoat may have been released over six decades ago, but its legacy continues to resonate in the world of film and beyond. Its innovative storytelling, groundbreaking use of color, and inspiring characters have left an indelible mark on the industry, making it a true classic. In the movie Operation Petticoat, Tony Curtis plays the character Nicholas Holden, who bears a striking resemblance to Neil Caffrey, Matt Bomer's character in White Collar. Coincidentally, Neil Caffrey sometimes uses the alias Nick Holden. The film's plot draws inspiration from a true story involving the USS Sea Dragon, a submarine based in Kuwait. During a patrol, the submarine's black paint was damaged by fire in an air raid, causing it to peel off and reveal a red undercoat. This red submarine subsequently sank three Japanese ships, leading Tokyo Rose to broadcast about red pirate submarines. To capture the submarine's exterior shots, the USS Balao SS-205 was painted pink and used in and around Key West, LFL. Meanwhile, the USS Archerfish SS-311, renamed at its 1952 recommission, wore the standard colors of gray and black and was utilized for both interior and exterior shots in Key West. Lastly, the USS Queenfish SS-393 was used in the opening and closing scenes, and for the at-sea shots filmed in and around San Diego, Sirth. In the original casting plans for Operation Petticoat, roles were quite different. Jeff Chandler was considered for the lead, but ultimately turned it down to work on another project. The role then went to Cary Grant, who initially hesitated due to age concerns, being considerably older than a typical wartime captain. In the film Operation Petticoat, the scene where a truck sinks was inspired by a true event during World War II. 
Specifically, it was based on an incident involving the USS Bofin in 1944. The submarine attacked several Japanese ships in Minami Daito Harbor, and one torpedo missed its target and struck a dock instead. A bus parked nearby was destroyed by the blast and ended up in the water. Three actors from Operation Petticoat later worked together again on the Love Boat TV series. Dick Sargent and Dina Merrill made separate appearances, while Marion Ross took on multiple roles before becoming a regular cast member. Interestingly, some stars from the Operation Petticoat spin-off series also guested on the Love Boat. John Astin and Richard Gilliland, both from the original show's first season, and Melinda Nod, who joined after the second season's cancellation, all made memorable appearances. Cary Grant, who starred in Operation Petticoat as a submarine captain, had previously played a similar role in Destination Tokyo back in 1943. His experience and talent were put to good use in bringing the character to life in this beloved comedy. Indeed, Grant's portrayal added depth and humor to the storyline, making Operation Petticoat a timeless classic among war films. Did you know that Operation Petticoat first hit the big screen over six decades ago? This classic has left an indelible mark on many cinema lovers. We're curious, what's your story? How did this movie influence your perspective on films or touch you personally? Maybe you found its unique blend of comedy and romance inspiring, or perhaps it was the remarkable cast that made you fall in love with this timeless piece. Whatever your connection may be, we would truly enjoy hearing all about it. Feeling nostalgic already? Why not take a trip down memory lane and share your favorite moments from the movie with friends and family? Be sure to like, share, and tag someone who also cherishes this classic. And don't forget to subscribe for more exciting journeys into the world of cinema. So, tell us dear viewer, what does Operation Petticoat mean?